You're listening to Serafina Speaks for Children Who Think, the show that delivers you my take on topics that are important. I'm your host, Serafina Melina Durban. Let's go right ahead to the show, shall we? Regular listeners know I live in England. If you live elsewhere in the world, you're possibly about to enter the unknown. Or at least I think the sayings I'm going to talk about aren't ones people say anywhere else. I'm Serafina Melina Dabin and this is Serafina Speaks, a podcast for children who think. For a while now I've been noticing sayings that don't seem to be logical, but grown-ups use them anyway. There wasn't one firework type moment when I noticed these sayings. It's been a gradual thing where I realised adults say the strangest things. I looked one up, fill your boots, which I'll explain more about later, and I learned it's an idiom. I like the way the online twinkle site describes what an idiom is. Here goes, idioms are common phrases with a meaning that can't be understood by looking at its individual words. The funny parts of everyday speech to communicate thoughts, ideas and feelings without referring to them literally. At least this confirms these sayings are funny ones. It goes on to say idioms add colour and are unique to each language. Unsurprisingly, it can be hard for non-native speakers to understand as their meanings are not always obvious. I'm an English speaker as you can hear, but sometimes I'm lost. I can't be the only one. Let's see about some of these sayings, shall we? Which ones do you recognise? Brits are obsessed with the weather. It's a talking point every day. The first saying fits well then. Grown-ups say it's raining cats and dogs, which means it's a heavy downpour of rain. But the idea of cats and dogs raining from the sky is just weird. Now how did this saying become popular? In 1738, writer Jonathan Smith, sorry, I meant Swift, published a collection of conversations on the upper classes and in it one of his characters is worried that it will rain cats and dogs. Swift's phrase stuck. Listeners, that was a hard sentence to say. He also wrote a poem called City Shower. He described floods which left dead animals in the streets of London. Locals talked about the weather as raining cats and dogs. The saying is still really popular after all these years. The next saying also started hundreds of years ago in England. I hear fill your boots quite a lot, but what does it mean? Shall I get my Wellington boots and fill them with baked beans? Or custard? No, this isn't what it means. One explanation of where this saying came from is found in a military museum at Portsmouth. That's in the UK, by the way. It's possible to buy a thick leather cup there, which is a replica of the sailor's mug used on board in Horatio Nelson's time. And it was used, among other things, for the rum ration sailors were given. This cup is called a boot. And when things were good and sailors got an extra rum ration, they were told, fill your boots. This isn't the only explanation though. English coal miners wore hobnail boots, which means nails were put into the soles of the boots and these were slippery on cobblestone streets, so they carried them home after work so they wouldn't slip. It's said that this allowed them to fill their boots with coal, which would be just enough coal for one family for a day. But what exactly does fill your boots mean? Whether it's rum or coal, it means take as much of something as you want. Listeners, we'll return to adult sayings that make no sense. Next, info on a podcast I'm listening to and loving. Jonathan Cormer is an amazing voice actor. He's host of Dorktales Storytime, a show that gives a fun, modern-day twist to classic kids' stories. He happens to be on the autism spectrum too. You're going to think this podcast is a bit young for you. Initially, go with me here. I'm steering you towards Jonathan's Hidden Heroes of History episodes. These are my favourites. They're real stories about unsung people you probably never learned about, but who've changed history. These episodes are informative and entertaining inclusive history lessons. Listeners, did you know history is one of my favourite subjects? 
Dork Tales Hidden Heroes of History episodes celebrate inspirational people who contributed in big ways to make impacts in the arts, sciences or maths. Many of the featured people are women or people of colour who persevered despite challenges, like the sculptor Ruth Asawa or scientist and innovator George Washington Carver. In these episodes, Reg, Jonathan's hedgehog sidekick, asks questions that help explain hard concepts, definitions, or topics like racism. Episode 8 is one of my favourites. It's about a man who built a legacy beyond his music. Louis Armstrong transformed the jazz music scene and performed all over the world. Jonathan talks about Louis Armstrong's commitment to his neighbourhood and he stresses that there are hidden heroes all around us. One of the messages in this episode is that you don't have to have nationwide recognition to be a hero. That's the truth right there. I asked Jonathan to tell us about a hidden hero in his own life. Here's his answer. Well, thank you very much, Serafina. And thank you for listening to Dork Tales Storytime. Hmm, one of my hidden heroes. Let's see. Oh, here's one. Um, This is one of my old elementary school teachers, a man named Michael Williams. Back when I was uh, much younger, I was very, very shy and quiet and reserved, and I didn't like talking to people, and I was in kind of my own shell. And Michael had this great idea that he talked to my parents about. It was called Project Hug. And all the other teachers got in on it, too. Basically, whenever I would come to class and he would see me, he would give me a nice, big, warm hug saying, Jonathan, oh, it's so good to see you, bud. And uh, when I would leave, he would do the same thing. It was a little... Weird at first, but you know what? After a while, it worked. I started to come out of my shell more, and I started to be uh, more comfortable with being myself. And now I'm doing this podcast, talking to so many people. So something about it worked. <laughs> now, um, I have a question for you, Serafina. Who's one of your hidden heroes? This is Jonathan Cormer from Dork Tales Storytime, signing off. Bye! First of all, what a brilliant hidden hero in your life. Thank you, Jonathan. All that hugging must have been very awkward at first. It's good that it worked for you, though. I'm thinking it was quite a high-risk strategy Mr. Williams used. You asked about one of my hidden heroes. That would be my cat, Myrtle. When I'm doing certain home education things like math and English, she sits with me and snuggles up to me. I know she's silently cheering me on. Myrtle isn't a sociable cat. This makes her support all the more precious. Thank you again, Jonathan, for your Dork Tales Storytime podcast and all you do and for sharing your wonderful hidden hero with us. Before we move on, listeners, take a moment to think about who your hidden heroes are. And remember to listen to Jonathan and the characters that feature in his show. Back to sayings. What's your favourite piece of cake? Mine is moist chocolate cake with chocolate icing, but not too thick icing because that makes it sickly. Montgomery's favourite cake is red velvet and Horatio adores vanilla cheesecake best. My next saying that adults say that makes no sense is about cake. Here it is. You can't have your cake and eat it too. I don't know about you, but I agree with comedian Billy Connolly when he said, what good is having a cake if you can't eat it? If you didn't know, I'm dyslexic and saying Billy Connolly is really hard. I mean Connolly. He's right. What use is having a cake that you can't eat? That can't be the meaning or all those cake shops would be closed. There has to be more to this saying. I'm looking for common sense. Turns out from my research, you can't have your cake and eat it too means you can't simultaneously retain possession of a cake and eat it too. Once the cake is eaten, it's gone. The better way of looking at this is you can't eat your cake and then still have it too. 
What's the lesson this saying teaches us? I'm told it means that we must make a choice. We cannot have it both ways. I'm not convinced. Next is a saying my mama says in winter. I can hear her when I'm downstairs when she goes upstairs. Then there's this loud voice that says, It's like Blackpool illuminations in here. To be honest, she says it's like, Bleep, Blackpool illuminations in here. I assume she's annoyed about how many lights are left on without people in rooms. It's never a good kind of shriek. What I wonder is where this saying comes from. My mama lived in the northern part of England for a few years, and this saying comes from there. Blackpool is a place up north, and every year the city has a lights festival that is 10 kilometres long, and it uses over 1 million bulbs. It blazes lights on for months, costing £1.9 million each year, which is why grown-ups that use this saying are cross that they're using money to light empty rooms. At least there's a decent explanation for this one. There are more than 25,000 idioms in the English language. Some make more sense than others. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but this talk about idioms might be a storm in the teacup. Do you think so, Monty, or were you just sharing two more famous sayings? Letting the cat out of the bag is about sharing a secret, and a storm in a teacup is about making a big deal about something small. I'm on the fence about this. You're right there, Horatia, and thank you for that saying. Being on the fence is about being undecided. Let's face it, we could talk about this till the cows come home, which is another saying which means it will take ages and ages. It seems that idioms really do say one thing, but mean another, which is, let's face it, confusing. Friends take nothing for granted. Dig below the surface and you'll find meaning for yourself. I encourage you to use idioms and see how your grown-ups like them. Maybe choose one a week. I might see how wipe that smile off your face goes with my brothers, though I won't be saying this to my mama. Listeners, look out for the micro behind-the-scenes bulletin episode on this week's topic. Don't forget if you'd like to get involved and join my correspondent team, all you have to do is leave a review for this show on your fave podcast app, then take a screenshot and send it to me at seraphina at seraphinaspeaks.com. Then I'll be in touch with you with more info. I'm all is. See what I did there? That's another idiom. (laughs) By the way, if you're looking for an idea of what to say in your review, if you're like me, you go blank, even though you want to do this. Here's a question for you to answer in your review. What's the saying that adults in your life say that just doesn't make sense to you. Of course, you can always tell me which country you live in and what you like about Serafina Speaks. Keep your eyes peeled for next week's episode. It's my first in a two-parter on pyjamas. My fascinating facts on bedwear will bring you so many dilemmas you might not be able to sleep. Brace yourselves for pyjama info perhaps you've not considered before. I hope you will tune in. Thanks for listening, everyone. Remember, smash that subscribe button and tell your friends, family and teachers to listen in too. Till next time, take care. Wow, I hope you enjoyed the show, everybody. If you like what you hear, click the subscribe button. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Don't forget to leave me a review at iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts because then more people can find my podcast.